Hey guys, Viper Mike here. Um, so I've got the engine in this car and I actually forgot to put one of my polyurethane engine mounts in. Um, the trick is that seems to be the thing to do to put just one on the driver's side. So I figured since I'm going to be doing it anyway, I might as well make a quick video about it. Not sure if anybody else has ever made one, but um, I'm just going to show you guys how to install a polyurethane and motor mounts just on the uh, on the driver's side so to start I mean this engine's all back together it runs drives and everything so I'm just taking it apart as you would in your car if you were doing this so the first step is would be to get this uh, air cleaner out of the way get a little box here for our nuts and bolts and everything. Don't really lose anything. So we'll start with that. Now we've got to disconnect all these lines here. Disconnect our air temp sensor. Disconnect Connect our breather line for our uh, idle control motor. Get that off. And then we just undo the intake clamp here. comes off. There's also a little uh, screw on the bottom that you undo. This is where it attaches to the, uh, the impact bar here. Or not the impact bar, but it's like a brace, I guess. So the next thing we want to do is we want to get this uh, brace out of the way. So there, we just uh, pull this vacuum line off of it. Um, and then we just got to take these bolts out. The reason why we're taking this out of the way because we got to lift the engine up and if we don't pull this then it's going to hit the thermostat housing is going to hit on the bottom here. Um, so it's easiest to just pull this thing out of the way. You can pull your uh, EVAP controller out of the way and give you some more access. And I believe those are 15 mils there. just comes out and that should be all we have to do at the top now we want to get the car up in the air and then the rest is just on the bottom it doesn't look like it should hit anywhere else here it'll just give us enough room to just kind of lift the motor up enough to get sneak that motor mount out of there So let's go ahead and lift it up in the air. Okay, so now that the car is up in the air on the hoist, there's our motor mount. What we need to do is disconnect 
our exhaust right here. I just moved the car so it's still pretty warm. But you just take out that one V-band there and then the V-band on this side. Your car is probably going to look a little different because you're gonna, you'll have uh, extra metal here kind of covering the cats. Mine doesn't have that because this was my turbo car and that was all removed for the turbos. But I'm going to make new heat shields here to go around the cats. But anyway, um, that should be all we need to do. And then obviously we need to undo the motor mounts, which we've got one bolt there. And then we've got one nut there, they're three quarter inch nuts. So let's uh, go ahead and uh, get this exhaust disconnected. Um, and those motor mount nuts off, and then we should be able to lift it up. So we'll get the exhaust disconnected here first. When I was reconnecting, I kind of turned the V-band so they're easily accessible. Take our three quarter and get our motor mount nuts out. Now we just gotta pry these V-bands off. That way we can separate the exhaust. And it should come off fairly easy. My exhaust is all still tight, so hopefully it's kind of in the right place. We'll find out. Get my persuader out. Let's see, it's this one. Okay, there's one in. Where's the other? Good news, it didn't pop off. I guess it's kind of in the right place. And we have our flex joint there, so it should allow us to pry the exhaust out of it off the header, hopefully. Yep. You, you might not even have to do this considering that flex joint is there. It might give you enough space to uh, be able to lift the motor and kind of flex with it. But I'd rather just be safe and not break anything. Okay, so we've got the exhaust off. On both 
sides. So now, I mean, if you're doing this on the ground, you just take a floor jack. Uh, if you're doing this on the hoist, you can also take a floor jack, but then you need something, obviously, to be able to lift the motor. So, Got this floor jack and a big old metal bar. Should reach. If not, we'll just drop the uh, hoist down a bit lower. Careful with the oil pan if it is an aluminum oil pan, so we don't want to break it. see here we've got some separation in the motor mount there um, I'll take these bolts out and see how much more room we need to be able to clear don't want to lift more than we have to I believe those are half-inch bolts And then the bottom one, you just do by hand. You just use a wrench. bolts out kind of gives you an idea of how much more space you need to get this thing out of here so we'll just lift the motor up a little more okay so I've put the, the uh, motor mount in the vise here um, you want to remember which way these little metal heat shields go because you're going to want to reuse them so we'll go ahead and uh, take this nut off hopefully it comes off 
You know, she was a little rusty, but not bad. So you see here, you've got your heat shield, it goes like so. So there's your old motor mount. This one was starting to tear. I did notice the motor moving quite a bit on that car, so which is why I decided to do this. And we've got our new motor mount, comes with the new hardware. And it's also got a dimple here that you see. So that dimple lines up with that hole. And you also want to remember to put your heat shield back on, like so. And you've got your dimple in place there. So now you use the new hardware. I don't see why you can't just reuse the old one, but whatever. And you want to make sure the dimple stays in place as you tighten this thing down. Uh, we'll just give it a good tighten. And that's probably good enough. So we've got our new motor mount installed. You can probably push the heat shield down a bit so it doesn't get in the way of anything as you're trying to reinstall this. And now we're ready to put it back in the car. This stud is a bit longer than the old one, so it might fight us a little bit going back in, but uh, we'll see what we can do. Okay, so now we're gonna try to sneak this thing in here. Make sure we're going the right way around. Put this hardware down for now. possible. bolts back in. Move you guys a little closer here so you can see that it's in and seated. Might have to drop the motor a little, but first here I'll show you guys so you can see how much the exhaust has to separate. You can see there, that's why we disconnected the exhaust. I don't know if this flex section would have had enough. And then here it is on the passenger side. That's how much it separated there. So if you're doing them both, um, then you would just do one side at a time because you can kind of tilt the motor back and forth. But I think most people only do one side. So we'll go ahead and uh, drop the motor down a little bit.
We just want to make sure that all our bolts line up and we can start them all by hand. Don't want to cross thread anything. This is the easiest one to get to. So we'll just snug that one up. Okay, We've got those pretty tight. We can go ahead and drop the motor back down now. Okay. So now we'll take our new hardware and get it on the stud see where it's sitting here same place as the old one was and we'll tighten that back up and then before we tighten anything, we should reconnect our exhaust, make sure that all goes back on properly. Probably need our pry bar. It's a little bit warm, which isn't ideal. It's almost there. We'll get our passenger side, make sure that lines up again. So we'll get those V-bands on and then we'll tighten everything up. Probably gonna struggle with this exhaust here a little bit, but hopefully it won't be too bad.
Okay, so my GoPro battery died. So in the meantime, I just put the uh, wheel well liners in. Got the little heat shields made around the caps. But anyway, we'll just finish up doing this. So now we can put our brace back in. Make sure that all goes in correctly. It's a little tight going up, but it just slots in there. Sometimes we need to extrude it a little bit. It was a lot easier to put in. Usually get the front bolts in first, tighten those, and then tighten the back ones. That way, it's for sure seated flat and all the way in. back in for the vacuum line, put our EVAP controller back on its mount, and now we're ready to put our air cleaner back. Looks good, so we'll go ahead and put the air cleaner on now. So we'll take this bottom nut and loosen it. Make sure it slots in here properly. Make sure our boot goes around the throttle body. Get our idle 
there, hose on. Vent line. Make sure that's all hooked up. Put our little plastic nuts in here. And then tighten up the Get our clamp on. And that's that. So we're all done. And that's how you install a polyurethane motor mount on the driver's side. Passenger side would be pretty similar. You just lift the motor up on the passenger side more, and then it'll give you room to, uh, to get it in there. So any questions, comments, please uh, uh, leave them down below and uh, like and subscribe. Um, more videos on the Vipers coming. Thanks guys.